welcome back to my channel guys and if you are enjoying this content can you please subscribe to my youtube channel you know youtube told me to let y'all know that you know if you like it you know hit the like button if you want to say something about the video leave a comment and if you just like this channel overall just consider subscribing so they told me to tell y'all that so anyway this is more of a story time like i said i want to talk more about nursing but i do want to share my experience with, with you guys when i used to be a correctional nurse yes i used to work at a prison and when i first heard of correctional nurses i was like wow that sounds scary and then when i researched it i was like okay it doesn't sound too bad and when i actually applied to work at a prison it was pretty cool it was so of course it was so different because you're dealing with prisoners so i simply i didn't need any special training i didn't have to know about the whole judicial system and how court works because that was a whole nother side of, of the prison that i didn't work for but like the other nurses say you learn along the way you do and your job is to take care of the inmates and just be a nurse all day every day so prison i work for i'm not going to name it okay and i didn't work that long i did my training my two weeks training and i found out yeah it's not really for me but i did enjoy the experience that i had now the company had two locations two prisons one was medium security and one was maximum security i started all they started me off, I think I went to the me, medium security first. So it's a few minutes away from the maximum security. So the medium security, um, of course, when you get there, you can't bring any type of contraband in there. Like if I could bring my phone, but I had to lock it up in the, the lockers that they provided or just leave it in your car or just don't bring it at all. But who doesn't walk around with a cell phone? So I would just leave it in a little locker. They give us a little locker with a key. We, we can keep the key. But that's pretty much all we can bring was a pen. And we get there. Of course, we go through the metal detector like everybody else do. If you bring in a bag, they go through our bags. And at this one, we have to have clear bags. Like you have to go buy like a clear book bag that they can see through. No big deal. I just didn't bring a bag at all. I brought my keys and my phone. Locked my keys up. And we have nursing sta station at both facilities. Like when it's on the lower level, it's like you turn a corner. And it's a nursing station. So that's where all the nurses pretty much be for most of the day. Um, or that's where the inmates would come if they need any type of medical attention. Now, it wasn't I wouldn't say it was a, a medical office because it's not just the nurses in there. The doctors are there, and I believe the young lady was a dentist. I believe she was, didn't see her much, but the doctor was in there, and this one particular doctor, he was so cool. He was kind of younger, military doctor, loved to teach. You know, he didn't feel, didn't make you feel threatened at all. And when as I was training, um, one part of my training was to spend time in the doctor's office, so, and he let me sit with him. And when patients would come see me, of course, they would ask the patient if it's okay if I listen in because sometimes they want to talk. They don't want to talk to nurses. They want to talk to a doctor. And this particular person was like, yeah, because, you know, he was going through something very painful. He didn't care. He just wanted to get out of pain. So he kind of let me know, have you ever heard of this? I'm like, yeah, I heard of it. He was telling me like, so he's experiencing this right now. This is what happened to him. And I just learned so much and he was not, you know, I thanked him. I was like, you know, a lot of times doctors, they really don't want to teach. He was like, nah. And he was telling me that he was military. And, but anyway, that was a good time. But yeah, there's probably some word. Like, I don't want to hear that. Let's hear about the inmates. So the media security, that's where, depends on what type of crime you committed. And the juvenile inmates were there at the medium security, the underage juveniles who committed like really really big crimes you know taking people out we had a few of them there so they i guess once they get older they go to the maximum security but 
at the end. And then some of them, some of their cases were fresh. Like they only been there for like a few couple months or something. Maybe they wait and trial. I didn't, I don't know. Um, I tried to stick to the nursing side of it and not so much the law of work being a correctional nurse. But sometimes you just got to ask. And like, some, I'm not going to lie, I ask my coworkers like, and I see certain people I'm like why why are they why are they here? And some sometimes they would tell me they're like, yeah, this person is here for that. And it was like, see, you can't judge people because this particular person don't look like they would do something like that, but they did. And sometimes when I was interacting, especially when I was going over there on the women's side, these inmates love to talk. And I appreciate it. And some people, and they'll just tell you their whole story. I'm like, wow, not judgmental at all. And just like us nurses, we learn a lot in prison, especially from the inmates. They are so creative. Uh, I learned some of the little tricks that they use to like grow their hair in prison. And it's like, yeah. And even a nurse, she was like, yeah, they come in here pretending like they have yeast infections. And she said, I've been here long enough to know what they really want. So they put the yeast infection cream in their hair and they say it grows their hair. I said, okay, I'm not trying it, but okay. <laughs> so you learn so much. And at the medium security, they kind of have, I won't say freedom, but it, in certain parts of the prison, they would just be walking in the halls with you. I mean, it's secluded to where they are, so like they can't get out that particular area, but it's not like they shackled down or anything. And it's totally different over at the maximum security, which I discussed that in a minute in a minute. So medium security, it was really cool. And then we got to the point when it was lunchtime. And she was like, Did you bring anything to eat? I was like, No. I was like, I'm not hungry. She's like, Well, if you're hungry, you can go to the cafeteria and she's like oh yeah the prisoners make the food i said oh yeah that's okay i just get something out the vending machine i'm trying to be non-judgmental but i just no i just didn't want to eat in the cafeteria i i don't eat with them they work in the cafeteria so they cook the food for the other inmates and employees we do have to pay obviously they don't and so the medium security is pretty cool, you know, free parking, <laughs> maximum, secure, maximum security uh, prison look different. It's multi-levels. I don't know how many floors it was at the time. I'm pretty, I know for a fact they did like some reconstruction uh, or whatever. I haven't been down there in so long. So I have a reason to if I'm not working, right? So maximum security, like it said, maximum security. You once you get in the same situation, if you bring a phone, you gotta lock it up downstairs. They pat you down. Um, they take you upstairs. Um, once you get up there, there's so many doors and these these big, thick steel doors. And certain areas is like. Only one door is open at a time, kind of like a negative pressure room. I'm just talking about the doors. But so only one door will open at a time. So when this door open, you stand in that area until that door closed. And then they escort you to the other door to get to. It's so many of these big, thick steel doors you have to go through, of course, with the officer because he goes everywhere with you. He's supposed to go everywhere with you as a nurse. Once you leave out, once you outside of the um, the medical room, because I, I keep wanting to say nursing nursing office, but like I said, the doctors are there. Um, I think the psychiatrist is there and the dentist. So the medical area. Okay, so once we get there, it's kind of you know relaxed because. And even if a prisoner was to come to you, of course, the officer is with them. And sometimes, depending on what they did or what type of behavior that they have, they are shackled down. 
and some even have on a straight jacket if that's what it requires and if they want some medical attention we kind of assess them and take care of that and of course we had a med room where all the medications are and the um, medication carts and some prisoners they some inmates get medications and we take that big old cart and we roll it out to the different areas and whatever area that they in you saw you ha you see how those cells are in maximum security and sometimes either they will line up for their medications or if they in those like sit us confinement we will actually take the medications to them a lot of times they won't take it they'll throw it at you and like the guard said don't ever argue with them they throw it at you don't want it just document that keep moving and that's what we had to do um never experienced a emergency while i was there um once again all the staff was very very um very nice especially the doctors they are very keen to teaching you know they love to teach they i just love it because a lot of times especially in the hospital you probably won't get much of that maybe at a smaller hospital like a community hospital where you have more of a family structure when everybody feels like family but at this particular um facility i kind of felt like that you know and of course we have the area where pregnant women are and it's unfortunate that like we now if they go into labor obviously we're going to call for an ambulance to take them to the hospital to deliver the baby and from my understanding when women have babies and they're going to be in jail for life or for extended period of time they prefer mom not to bond with the baby because they taking their baby right from her as she gives birth i think some and and i could be wrong but she might get to hold the baby for a second and after that that's it that baby belongs to the state now the baby's in state custody because once mom is healed and stable she went back to the prison now i did they did tell me that before i came there um, young lady, a young lady did go into labor at the prison because it just happened so fast so they end up delivering the baby at the prison and mom and baby got escorted to the hospital of course baby stayed mom came back afterwards um what else i got to experience yeah some of the very how can i say this without breaking the hip a lot certain patients certain inmates the word there that I have heard about on the news and stuff and they would tell me like this is so and so have you heard of this person you know before I met them like oh yeah I heard that story I was like yeah that's that's the patient right there or uh, the inmate right there I was like oh wow and they will always say do not show fear do not let them inmates see that you are afraid of them because they will take advantage of that but at the same time like I say, you walk around with the guard wherever you go. Anytime, anytime you have interaction with these inmates, no matter what they did, the fact that they're at a maximum security says that they did something. And I'm not going to lie, I did see some nurses walking around without guards, but I was like, no, not me. When I'm passing meds, I need the guard to be there, the officer to be right there with me at all times. And of course we had the, what's called, this was kind of cool. It was a rubber room. It was for, you know, the patients who felt like harming themselves. So the floor is rubber, the walls are rubber, the ceiling is rubber, everything is rubber. And they were all these soft clothing, if that makes sense. Any, the clothing that they can't harm themselves or no shoestrings or anything like that. And when we gave them medication, we had to like crush it and i felt like one time i didn't do this but i did see another nurse like and it was just, i guess it's a policy that they crushed the medications the ones that can be crushed they were crushed medications and they don't get like a cup or anything like she literally has put 
the powder in his hand and he just take it or throw it or whatever like most of them they don't like taking medications until they get really really sick and it's like oh my god i think i should have maybe i should have been taking that and like i said if they refuse a medication obviously in a hospital setting you ask why they why they want to don't want to take their medication you need this medication but with them it's like sometimes asking why can trigger them but i would just reiterate so you're not going to take your medication i might ask you know why don't you want to take your medication because i don't want to that's all the reason i need document that and keep it moving but no it's not a it for me it wasn't scary it was different i always wonder what what it was like to be a correctional nurse. And I got the experience there not long, because like I said, I did my little two-week two week training. And I was like, yeah, it's not for me. It's a no for me, dog. But nonetheless, I enjoyed the experience that I, that I did have there. And the doctors were amazing. I love the fact, I love it when a doctor want to teach and don't feel bothered by you being in a presence because most times they are annoyed. These doctors like, come, 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 let me show you this. Let me, you might want to listen in on this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I appreciate that. And of course the nurses too, they're very friendly. They very helpful. And it was always telling me, and we're talking about like the judicial side of it all. But a lot of, like I say, not very familiar with how the law works especially when you do crimes of this nature that will put you into a maximum security so yes that was my experience being a correctional nurse and it wasn't bad it wasn't bad at all and if you ever thought about being a correctional nurse it's not as scary you know you know you're not getting beat up by patients i mean by the inmates patients too they be patient they become your patient when they're in your care, so patient inmate, I hate to use those interchangeably, but consider the topic, I have to, so yeah, that was my experience, wasn't too shabby, wasn't too shabby at all, would I go back to being one, no, I'm cool where I am, uh, you know, I like my job, yeah, I've been there 10 years, so of course, it's going to change once I'm finished with the RN program, because my dream job is to work as an OR nurse. That's what I plan on doing. That's my calling. That's where I belong. And I will get there next year. So I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this story time. Like, I think I did a good job without breaking any HIPAA laws. Like, I didn't tell you what, exactly what facility I work at. And I probably won't because, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> but anyway... YouTube told me to let y'all know that it's okay if y'all subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's okay if you like the video if you like it. And it's okay to leave a comment if you want to say something about this video. And I hope you found this video helpful. And even if you're not a nurse, you know, I know I say all oh, nurses. But just, you know, thank you for rocking with me. And I truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.